Apologies, didn't have my microphone unmuted. So, uh, hey, welcome guys to the MXS Night 2 games. Uh, apologies for that. Uh, that. My mic was muted that whole time. Anyway, MXS Games Night 2. So tonight we're going to do Supermoto. We are going to do pit bike racing and we are going to do the best trick competition. And I'm sure we'll jump on a call here soon with Dominic Saulnier to break it all down for you guys and see what's happening. Um, if you missed MXS Games Night 1, be sure to watch the replay live or, or the recast, I, I should say, on our channel. Uh, in that event, there was the straight rhythm event, which we missed some of it. Unfortunately, I had to go help my wife get her keys out of her vehicle. Uh, there was also the best whip competition and the quarter pipe high air or big air. Uh, so we saw three gold medalists crowned last night, and we're going to have another three gold medalists crowned uh, tonight. So we're going to kick things off with Supermoto. And Supermoto is going to be pretty much like a Supercross event in a sense it is going to be uh two heat races one lcq and a main event top 40 riders have been seeded into this already and so they're working on that format right now uh, um there we go all right get back to windowed mode so i don't miss out on all this stuff here um <clears throat> anyway so yeah super mode is going to be up first we're going to have heat races then we're going to have an lcq and we'll follow it up with the main event. Obviously, the main event is 20 minutes plus two laps, just, just like a normal Supercross race would be, like I said. Uh, so nothing dramatically different there. Uh, top 40 in qualifying, two six-minute plus one-lap heat races with 20 riders each, top nine transfer. Uh, a four-minute plus one-lap last chance qualifier with the top four going through to make up the 22-rider, 20-minute plus one-lap main event. And uh, let's give old... Dominic Saulnier, a call here and see what is happening as he gets ready to bring us the action here tonight. Hello, hello. Hello, hello indeed. How well, are you doing tonight? We are all doing an easier night than last and we should have a pretty solid night set up here. So. All right. I like that plan. I like that plan a lot. All right, I think we can get uh get ready on trying to execute scripts here. I believe all the tracks are set correctly. Everything's good. Let's give this a shot. All right, so Supermoto coming up first. We'll show you a brief onboard here with Casey Cochran as he is going to okay. cut the track or do some weird things. Not sure what's going on here. Um, but you can see a lot of the track is going to be up on this plateau where there's uh, asphalt in the parking lot. Some swooping corners between the cones, and then you drop off the top oh, of this wow. hill here down by the starting line. The starting line is going to be on the left side of the track. And then it continues on straight, but Cochran's coming to a stop. So it looks like we're going to end up being a little lucky on time saving and end up running no heats, as not enough people appear to have showed up. People are complaining in chat that they didn't make UID. Nope, I'm not seeing anyone else complain after I run, ran heat 2, so we're just going to go... 
a no heat call out because that just makes our lives easier, doesn't it? <laughs> All right, so no heats. We got 17 riders, which means no LCQ either. We're going straight to the main. And indeed, yes, that is actually uh, Casey Cochran in the flesh. Well, in the virtual flesh, I should say. Some guys rocking some Boy, super moto tires tonight. Uh, so here is Cochran showing us the hotline around this track, jumping up onto that tabletop. Looks a little funky with the supermoto tires, I know, but uh, don't worry, the traction is no different. If he had a knobby tire or supermoto tire on, that doesn't affect anything. That's just aesthetics. Sorry, just a quick second to get around running heats here real quick. I just uh, grab something I could grab the first time. No problemo. So it looks like our starting lineup tonight is going to be Jake Spies, Carter Hallpain, Chandler Blocks, and Tanner Rogers, Casey Cochran, Hayden Stevenson, Ashton Rakowski, Cody Harrington, Gunnar Ortiz, Ethan Parks, Will Clark, Noah Smurden, Zach Palm, Josh Bellinger, uh, Jacob Hubbard, Christopher McPherson, and Jacob Kingsfield. Going to be the 17 riders into the Supermoto Final. Oh, man, you suck. All right, well, I can do it the old-fashioned way. At least it's all the info I can do it that way. Hard. So we're also getting our first look here tonight of the kind of Supercross track that's going to be featured not only in the Supermoto event, but the Supercross event as well, and eventually Speed and Style. Supercross and Speed and Style both going to be tomorrow night, part of Night 3's festivities. As Cochran shows us the fast line around this track, looks like he's already practicing for Speed and Style as well. He just did a couple backflips on the double over the start and the finish line jump. So he does do another backflip on this one right here. Nope, just a flashy little scrub into a whip. We're almost there. Just one more minute. No problem. We're just watching Cochran shred around here. We also got Tanner Rogers here tonight. There's Chandler Bloxham, Rakowski, Josh Bellinger, Bill Cosby. Uh-oh. Oh, I don't like the name that he's got there. <laughs> got Ethan Parks here, my teammate, Jacob Kingsfield, Will Clark. There's Jake Spies, Zach Palm. Hey, myself. Try to do a lap for you guys. Gonna be rough around the edges. <laughs> Still trying to get good at the game again. That's not gonna end well. Rip! Rest in pepperonis! Uh, this is not the pit bike race just yet. This is uh, this is Supermoto Super first, first, and pit bike racing coming up shortly. I believe I got F1. So we're gonna do a warm up on our. Arm. Oh, gonna race Casey Cochran. Oh my gosh, I'm so fast. There was a time and place in this game where I might have had at least something for Casey. Not anymore. <laughs> I can relate to you on that one. 
All right, so is this what, warm-up lap? Yeah, this is going to be the warm-up lap to make sure everyone's in, because with having to do it this way, let's not just jump into it gung-ho. <laughs> right on. Oh, I definitely should not race the main. That's a de that's a bad idea. Are you in the main? Did I add you? Somewhere? No, <laughs> no. Okay, but someone like, well. in chat was like, "You should race," and I'm like, mm -hmm. "Bet." I don't know about that one. A warm up lap. These guys getting ready to go. Got some oh, camera set up. Carter, I did not see his name though. He was in uh, he won list. Oh yeah, he was in the heat one list case. So yeah. And call it Stevenson. Quick. All right. Uh, Zach Palm. Palm. Okay, yeah, hold on. So is it just, uh, Carter and Palm it's, that's calling it? Uh, yeah, and Hayden Stevenson says he's in warm-up as well. Oh. Okay. I can fix. <laughs> so yeah, it should be Stevenson. Yeah, he's a spec. Um, also the Zach Palmer is also a spectator for some reason, and yeah, Carter Hall, also a spectator for some reason. Alright, let's give it another test warm-up. We do actually have the official results of the heights from last night. Let me actually read yeah. them off for you. Give me just a second, and I'll give you guys the answer to that. I can also quickly butt in here and say that there was a metal swap after fine review and best whip where Riley um, Owensby was originally handed silver but, and Jake Spees was handed bronze. But after a closer inspection, I feel like it would be wrong to give Spees a lower position than Owensby. Yeah, so Jake Spees ends up with the silver in best whip over Riley Owensby, who then moves down to the bronze. And the quarter pipe big air results from last night. Jake Spees, the gold medalist at 159 feet. The silver medalist was Riley Owensby at 113 feet. And the bronze went to Hayden Stevenson at 99 feet. So these guys getting up there, 159 feet. A little unrealistic. Yeah, that was but off that's of the, uh, uh, the base of the ground. So going off of a 30-foot tall lip does <laughs> give them a bit of an advantage, but... Still, 159 feet is mind-boggling. <laughs> I mean, that's still off the top of the lip, 129 feet above. So yeah. They're definitely up there, that's for sure. So another warm-up, correct? Yeah, it should be just another quick warm-up. All I'm right. Sure. So our Supermoto contenders on the gate, they're doing one more warm-up lap here. Interesting mix of 250Fs, 450s. A lot of guys we don't normally see also racing, so it's a good mix here. It's going to be fun to watch and see who comes out on top. It will be the normal yeah. trend of the racers that we regularly right. see, or will someone new jump into the fray here? Cool. It's going to be the main on restart. We are ready to rock and roll. And we are set on the 20 minute plus one. We are good to go. All right, here comes your main event. All right, 20 minutes plus two lap, or plus a lap, I should say, for the final of the Supermoto racing action here at the MXS Games. We're going to have a gold medalist crowned here in about 22 minutes time here in the Supermoto event. Who is it going to be? A lot of heavy favorites in this one. Casey Cochran definitely has come to play tonight. Tanner Rogers also looking strong. Can someone dethrone them, or will it be the consistent runners at the front? We're going to find out right now. Here we go in the Supermoto event at the MXS Games. Gate drop. It's going to be Cochran oh. getting to the inside through the first sequence of corners, and he will indeed get the lead as around the outside someone tried to get in there but went down. So Cochran... Leads through the first sequence of corners. Hayden Stevenson settles in behind in second place. Zach Palm there. And now oh. that's Cochran going down in the whoops. Palm going down. Several the riders. kicking in. Yes, everybody going down in the whoops here. Now riders trying to avoid the down riders. Uh, I think it was McPherson almost looping out and going down. Cochran's getting tossed around a little bit here. And it's complete chaos. And the whoops on the first lap of the race. <laughs> Hayden Stevenson will then lead through the line. On lap number one, onto the second lap of the race, but they still have so much more of this track left to go. This is going to be a long lap time, a long race as well. 
And Stevenson leads them around. A quick shout out to Cody M in our chat for a $5 donation. Thanks so much. As we drop the gate here tonight on night two of the MXS games, Stevenson, Hubbard, and Rogers out front. Yeah, I'm pretty excited to see uh, Hubbard and Rogers run in two and three, seeing if they can give Stevenson any run for his money after he got the lead kind of handed to him there. Well, Hubbard's already oh. working up to Stevenson a little bit here as they come out of the valley up to the top section. This is the asphalt section for the Supermoto contenders, and it's a lot different of a surface than they were on that dirt. It's a little bit tackier in some spots, kind of slicker in other spots, but you can see it's a lot about smooth lines flowing the corners through these cones. And Stevenson getting the advantage so far. So Stevenson leads down this back straightaway. They're going to launch off of this little roller out into a big breaking bump section. And Hubbard oh. jumps into him and they both go down. Hubbard lands in the side of Stevenson and they both hit the deck. That's going to put Tanner Rogers into the race lead. Hubbard, didn't, Hubbard was trying to play the game of chicken with Stevenson and uh, he backed out a little too late it appears. Incredible turn of events just like that as Tanner Rogers on every single team out here tonight. The Phil's Premium Motorsports Old Man Racing RPF SPR of LastMX.com number 22 goes into the lead. Stevenson slid out of podium contention, hands it off to Hubbard again with Smearden sandwiching the two, sandwiched between the two. So Will Clark on the Boots House 114 moves into second place. Hubbard, like you mentioned, up to third. There's Noah Smearden on the JNP machine into fourth. Now Ethan Parks finds his way inside the top five ahead of Stevenson. Still no sign yet of Cochran recovering as Smurden now goes down out of fourth place. Parks is going to go by Stevenson. Oh. He's almost going down. Here comes Cochran with Chandler. Blocks him through the whoops. Cochran has to change lines with Smurden getting up. And Cochran goes through up into, I believe that is now, fifth place or sixth place, I should say. Yeah, Spee's also making quick work of all the people down through the whoops. Oh, and he cartwheels in that uh, rhythm section. Cochran working his way forward. We got a change for the lead. It's now Jacob oh, Hubbard do. on the Phil Ski and Snowboard backed number 778 machine. He is now taking the lead away from Tanner Rogers. So perhaps a little bit of a mistake out of the Phil's PMS OMR RPF SPR of LastMX.com number 22. That is way too many abbreviations. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hubbard leads him out of the valley on now the third lap of the race, but we still have so much time left in this 20 minute plus one lap race. We are only about three and a half minutes down. A lot of time gonna be left on the clock as now Clark looks like he's starting to close up a little bit on Rogers here for second place. Yeah, Hubbard's starting to gap out of base, charging into the section that got him last time. Let's see if he can ride out of it. He does. Yeah, this is a tricky one to launch out into these breaking bumps all the way into this corner. They're kind of moguls. Got to hop through them a little bit cleanly and yeah, not get kind kicked of out. The, the, chicken, the chicken fence in, the, in a way where uh, you kind of have to break in coming in because you can't hold it wide. You're going to die one way or another. So who's going to you know, cut it off at the last second. Absolutely good battle here for second place is brewing though. Will Clark is certainly all over Tanner Rogers here as Hubbard continues to sprint away out front, but a little mistake for Clark. That's going to cost him some time. And the gaps are starting to spread out even Ooh. more now. The road is going to play a factor on this track. So mm -hmm. we are going to see the dirt get chewed up quite a bit. Probably Rogers almost went down in the whoops. Clark's able to survive. Now Cochran has moved up into fifth place behind Parks as Stevenson makes yet another little mistake back here in sixth place. Now it's Parks that is closing up onto Clark here for third place. Trying to get that bronze medal position pulled away from the 114 Boots House Honda rider. Parks going with a different option through this rhythm lane as well. Doesn't work out in his favor though. Into the wall jump down the backside and another quick shout out to Cody M for the $1 donation. Thanks so much. Appreciate the support and everybody that's tuned in tonight. Hopefully you guys are having a good time so far. About a quarter of the way into the Supermoto final here at the MXS Games. And Will Clark battling it out right now for third place with Ethan Parks. Like you mentioned there with the erodes uh, system in place, there's ruts developing on the inside of these lines and some of the uh, 
lower lying sections of the track is getting some really technical sections already and we still have so much of this race left to go yeah it's uh it's definitely on a kind of a higher setting as not many laps are going to be put into the dirt section compared to say the supercross or the speed and style in a way because of the extension to the track being so dramatic seems like everybody's kind of settling into a nice groove so far as Jacob Hubbard continues to lead the race here on his Phil's Ski and Snowboard KTM, but he's going to slide out, lose a lot of time right there, and here comes Rogers. So Hubbard, he does not fall off the bike right there, but that was very close to a crash, and now he is going to fall off the bike. He goes down with the race lead and gives it back to Tanner Rogers. So a change at the front. Now Rogers is trying to get through the whoops clean here. He's been kind of struggling, but he goes for the triple-triple line a little bit smoother there. I think guys there are going to start goes. jumping through here. Yeah, that was kind of the intention with the wolves, make them a bit harder, but with enough spacing to gap. I'm glad to see some people are starting to opt in for that line. Hubbard remounts still in second. Parks just moved into third place, but then relinquishes it back to Will Clark. Meanwhile, here comes Casey Cochran from fifth, and this has turned into a four-rider battle now for second place with Hubbard off the front of this group, but they are all practically nose to tail as Rogers yeah. spreads it out out front a little bit. Rogers really hoping he holds that gap he has, because, oh, Hubbard down, he's going to bring maybe Cochran with him. That puts Parks up into second place now. Clark, he's a little kicked out sideways. He goes down. Hubbard clips him on landing somehow. Doesn't hit the deck with him. So Hubbard back into second place. Parks now finds himself in third. Cochran moves to fourth. Oh, but Hubbard shorts the table. And Parks around the outside, turns to the Ooh. inside. He is now moved into second place. The rider's got to be careful of not cutting inside of those uh, cones. They can definitely get some cuts from that. I am not nice on my timing gate placement. Look at this. Hubbard back up the inside, forces Parks out, and gets oh. back through. They are now about 10 seconds down of your race leader, Rogers. Uh, Cochran is right there behind, though, on the 90, sneaking in to the picture. Oh, oh Hubbard. Hubbard! He front flips into the braking bumps and goes kick. down. So Parks now moves into second place, and Cochran, been slowly creeping up on these guys this entire time, has made his way into third place. He's now in a medal position. Can he still get the gold away from Tanner Rogers? We are not yet halfway through this. Time's refreshing there for just a moment. It seems like some guys hopping in and out of the cones, maybe. Uh, possibly, yeah. Uh, like I said, my timing gate placement is uh, not nice. It's actually quite brutal. So if you get your front end even on the other side of a cone, you might be missing a timing gate. Uh, here we go. Battle for second as Parks tries to hold off Cochran. Through the whoops they go. Cochran goes for the jump line. Doesn't quite work as Parks holds it on on the outside. Parks taking a different option in this rhythm lane, and it finally bites him as Cochran scoots through to move up into the silver medal position here at a just about the halfway point. Now he's looking at an 11.4 second deficit to our race leader, Tanner Rogers. And how about two 250F riders out front here in the Supermoto final? Yeah, that's pretty uh, pretty impressive. Ethan Parks is definitely giving Cochran the run for his money still. He's not letting go, but Rogers is really starting to walk away. Here is your race leader, Tanner Rogers. And as we approach the halfway mark of this one, let's go ahead and give you guys a run through the field through all 17 riders that have started the Supermoto Final here at the MXS Games. This is brought to you by R Jerky. Head over to eatrjerky.com. Use the code SYS20 for 20% off your order as they bring you this top 17 rundown. Tanner Rogers on the number 22 Phil's PMS OMR RPF SPR Blastomex.com machine is your race leader. Second place now belongs to Casey Cochran on the Blakely Powder Coating number 90 machine. Third. For the SYS Racing Heckman Productions, number 56, it's Ethan Parks. Fourth now for Jacob Hubbard on the Phil Ski and Snowboard KTM. It's the 778 machine there. And fourth, fifth for the 114 of Will Clark on the Boots House Honda. Sixth now is Noah Smurden on the JNP number 100. This comes up out of the valley. Hayden Stevenson right behind him on the 312 AEO Power Sports machine. Back to eighth now is Jake Spies on the District Designs number 216. Ninth place for Carter Hallpain on the Team 2 Dope, number 128. And rounding out your top 10 at the moment is Ashton Rakowski 
on the BC Racing 924. 11th for Josh Bellinger on the BC Racing Machine as well, the 49 machine right behind him. Christopher McPherson occupies 12th on the Boots House number 317. 13th for Jacob Kingsfield on the Monster Mountain MX number 515. Gunnar Ortiz here in 14th place, the BC Racing number 208. 15th is Cody Harrington on the Car T number 22. Chandler blocks him on the SPR of LastMX.com. Number 360 is not going to finish this race, nor is Zach Palm on the District Designs. Number 189, that's a run through the field brought to you by our jerky. Yeah, it doesn't appear like much has happened. Uh, Ethan Parks may have had a slight bobble that gave Cochran a bit more of a healthy gap to breathe, but not much. Oh, Hubbard appears to have launched off the track. That might give Will Clark fourth place. Yeah, Hubbard gets going now behind Clark, so puts up uh, Clark into fourth, Hubbard back to fifth. I think what it's going to come down to for our gold medal position here is whether or not Tanner Rogers has a mistake still in him. Cochran has recovered well from his early race crash, but he is still too far down and needs some help out of our race leader, Tanner Rogers. Ooh, Will Clark going back down, so I think Hubbard's going to end up getting around him, just trying to find any battles that might be lurking. There actually seems to be a bit of a stack now, 4th to 7th place. Yeah, closing up a little bit. We also got Smurden right here behind Jake Spies for 6th. A little ways off that Hubbard-Will Clark soiree going on up the road. Everything's spread out pretty well otherwise. Hayden Stevenson, Carter Hall, Payne fairly close for 8th. And behind that, some pretty big gaps throughout the field. So it's going to come down to our leaders and what happens between them, it seems. Cochran's got it down under 10 seconds. So yeah, he's been he's, putting some good times down. He's trying to chip away at it. 2.02.6 last time by. We'll get a lap time check this time through. They match each other's lap times, but it does seem like Cochran's got a little bit more in him down the stretch here. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, he's been toying with bringing it under 8 seconds uh, this whole lap. It just kind of been bouncing around. So I'm curious to see what Cochran can do in this latter half of the race. So out front, Rogers lays down a 204.8, so one of his worst laps recently. Meanwhile, Cochran puts down a 201.9, so he was about three whole seconds uh, faster in that last lap alone. We got two minute lap times. We still have, oh, give or take, about six and a half minutes on the clock. So Cochran has some time to work with here if he can keep clicking laps like that off. But he's got to do it consistently, and that is so tough from this second place position. Yeah, and especially with how chewed up this dirt is starting to get. Like Chandler definitely didn't seem to appear pleasant of the road setting, but these riders are really starting to find their way around and starting to take different lines in some corners to avoid the roughness. A little further back, we have Will Clark and Hubbard still debating fourth place. They are not that close anymore to Ethan Park, so it seems like our medal positions are pretty safe at this point, barring a complete disaster up the road. But the battle for fourth is still a good one between these two. Yeah, definitely. Speed's also kind of knocking on that battle a little bit. He got probably trying to move his way up from, I think, a ninth place on that first lap. Hubbard does seem like he's got a little bit more speed in him than Clark. But Clark, the ever-consistent rider. Oh, as he lays it down right there, though, that tricky inside rut gr uh, grabbing a couple guys. And Clark. Yeah, no, that rut's starting to dig deep, so. They're going to have to find a way around that issue developing. Cochran, right. on the other hand, is, has this lead only down to below seven seconds just. Yeah, coming up on the last five minutes plus a lap in this race, and Cochran is just slowly bringing that gap down. He gets the whoops a little bit wrong. That's going to cost him some time. We'll get a lap time check this time through and see what happens. Cochran looks like he's going to go long on that table every single time. But like you said, under seven seconds, and it's still coming down just that little bit more. 205.6 now for Rogers, a 203.3. So about 2.3 seconds gained right there for Cochran last lap alone. Six second yeah, I gap. Think you can really see the erode is starting to chip away at riders' time and consistency now. The uh, the lap times are not dropping much anymore. They're very much starting to rise. Yeah, Cochran does seem like he's perhaps getting a little bit better though as the erode develops. 
maybe feeling a little bit more comfortable with the track conditions as such, whereas Rogers is not feeling that same way. His times are dropping off a lot from the pace that he was running. Yeah. And that is going to tighten things up here down the stretch. We may still have a battle for the gold medal match here. Cochran sliding in through that inside line. Just trying to push the pace up to Rogers. Rogers boots a lapped rider out of the way. There's not much in it. Hey, shout out to RacerRat66 as well uh, for the donation, 2420. That's a very hey. specific donation amount. <laughs> I don't know if there's a reason for that. Oh, oh Rogers! Oh, he's save. turned around. A nice save, but that is going to close Cochran right up oh, onto Cochran him now. Cochran riding onto the grass. That probably should be marked with a tough block, but that's not within timing gates. <laughs> Cochran, he may be getting cuts, and like you said, the uh, timing gate system, it's pretty tight around here, so these guys cannot be flirting too much with some off-track rides as Cochran is now closed right up to Rogers. Rogers, he went off the inside of the track there as well, perhaps. Yeah, to avoid... they're all toying with it. This is going to be interesting. So 1.1 seconds is the gap between the two. You can pretty much throw a blanket over them at this point. Third place is still Ethan Parks. He is 18 seconds off the lead, though, as Rogers starts getting the hops through the whoops a little bit. Cochran... Closing up just a little bit more, Ooh. but that huge roller into the corner that those guys are now hitting. Yeah, that thing's getting big. How about it, though, for a couple of 250 Supercross race winners from earlier this year, getting into the mix here for the win in the Supermoto final of the MXS games. We are down into the final three minutes of this one. And this is going to be a tight battle. Cochran has closed right Ooh. up onto him now. And he's really good through that kind of chicane section with the wall jump in the middle. And now he oh. is all over Rogers. He's just breathing down his neck. Any slight mistake from Rogers is going to give Cochran the lead. Cochran is just slowly inches his way up there. Then a big mistake out of Rogers really put it this close. And now look at Cochran trying to pull oh. up alongside up to the top of the hill. But the Rogers is going to shut the, the door. <laughs> Back Rogers and forth. Riding very defensively. Shutting every inside he can. Yeah, but Cochran, in response to that, is kind of arcing his corners a little bit better, and he's carrying more speed. A lapped rider comes into the play there. So Rogers had to cut oh. through some tough blocks. Cochran has to go around the outside of some of those cones as they launch Ooh. out into the rollers. Let's see, Cochran, he's trying to go up to this inside again. He just hung on to the dirt. I think he's good there. So he's, he's really toying with it. Oh, man, Cochran got a great drive through that switchback section. He's almost alongside here, down to the other end of the track, but Rogers holds steady for the time being. A great battle for the win here. I think here. we're going to have about two to oh, go. Oh, no! Rogers goes down. He hits that bump at the top of the hill all wrong, and Cochran oh. is there to pick up the pieces. Casey Cochran takes over the race lead in the Supermoto final here, and he is going to look at probably two laps to go this time by there. Oh, oh Cochran's, Cochran's down! Down. He goes down in the whoops. So Rogers here comes Rogers. He's going to close up as they he enters the whoops now. They're going to be almost oh. neck and neck. They come together. There's contact. They're both on top of each other as they pick it up together. Rogers retains the race lead now as Cochran settles in behind him. If they keep doing this, Ethan Parks might find a way to the top spot of the podium. He's right there with a small mistake in the whoops. Oh, man, they're both making small mistakes at the end of the rhythm lane as Cochran goes inside, tries to get a nose in there. They're nearly bar to bar over the finish line jump as time is set to expire in about 20 seconds. Cochran goes down Cochran after the finish down. line jump. He should and he still barely hold on to second over parts, but... Yeah, tucks the front end after that finish line, and... Oh, now Rogers goes down after the wall jump. Again, another mistake for your race leader. That's going to just allow Cochran through back into the lead. Back and forth we go as time has just now expired. The white flag will wave next time through. Oh, and Ethan Parks has caught up to them with these mistakes. He's only four seconds off. This has the makings to get very close as Cochran oh. cuts through the cones again. This really could come down to cuts. and it I mean, really if, Parks, if Parks keeps it close enough, he might and have clean. a chance to win this on cuts. Yeah. He Rogers. hasn't been really pushed hard enough to be needing to get in the inside a cone, so... Yeah, and these he guys are 70 seconds ahead of fourth place right now as 
Man, Rogers is really pushing onto that rear wheel of Casey Cochran. We've got ourselves a battle out front here. Oh, this mogul section getting kind of... Bit oh, Cochran down again! Corner. Unbelievable. Nobody can stay off the ground. That is going to put Ethan Parks into the oh. silver medal position. And it's going to force Rogers to ride clean for yet a final lap of this one. Got one more lap to hold it clean. Off the top of the hill, this is where Rogers went down last time through. But good this time as he's got Hayden Stevenson right behind him. Now they come up and over this jump out of the first turn complex. Oh man, Rogers riding a little bit high into the turn there. And now hopping through the whoops a little bit awkwardly, but pulls it together at the end of the section. Parks is still back here lurking as Cochran goes off the side of the whoops to try to get a drive into them. <laughs> Technique. Oh, a kick for Ethan. It's going to put him down and give Cochran back in second place. So Rogers crosses with the white flag now waving. And can he hold on for this final lap, or does he have yet another crash in him out front? This is where he crashed last time through on the wall jump. He's yeah. a little bit sketchy oh. through there. The track is getting really chewed up. I'm surprised at how well they're riding at this point, even. Definitely getting a lot gnarlier with the road throughout this race as Rogers now takes us through the rollers in the back straightaway one more time. Going to hit that table-to-table -table connection, trying to oh. lap the 208 machine here. Everybody <laughs> ducks out, out of the way. way. Cochran on the grind, but still cutting that one corner by the fence. Yeah, he is closing up, and, and Parks is still oh. back here. Cochran's completely stuck Parks. there. I think if Parks can keep it close enough, he might have enough to still maybe have gold off cuts. They, the front two have been really playing a risky game this whole race. Yeah, there's Rogers, Rogers off the off track, track again. <laughs> oh man, this is going to come down to the nitty gritty. We've got the, basically the last half of the lap to go here as Rogers tries to hold on for the gold medal. But nothing is guaranteed until the results are finally in and cuts are tallied. Oh, Cochran going down, so that's going to put Ethan back into second. Parks goes back through into second place on his SYS Racing Heckman Productions number 56 machine. And now Rogers off the top of the hill for the final time. He's got a few more rhythm sections to navigate, though, and these have been tricky. The whoops also going to come into play, so he's got to get through these sections clean. 12 second advantage now on Ethan Parks. Let's see how he does in the whoops. Does he play it very safe here? Oh, he's going to go oh. for the blitz. Ethan Works had out, a though. really lucky save, but it's going to give Cochran second place again. So Rogers just barely has to hold on here. Rogers getting through this rhythm lane rather clean, and he's got a pretty sizable margin. This could have been enough now for him to take the gold medal. Either way, Tanner Rogers is going to cross the finish line, jump first to win the Supermoto event. Let's see how it comes down to cuts. It should be too far at this point, but we'll see. Cochran going to try to finish this one up in the silver medal position. Mistake at the end of the rhythm lane, and Parks is there lurking. But it is going to be Cochran taking the silver with Parks, the bronze, depending on cuts. Noah Smurden, Will Clark, Carter Halpain already finished in sixth. Hayden Stevenson, Ashton Rakowski, McPherson, Bellinger, Kingsfield, Gunnar Ortiz, Jake Spees, Hubbard, Harrington, Bloxham, and Palm did not finish this race. So it looks like the last rider to come through is probably going to be Will Clark in fifth. He's trying to close up on Smurden. Yeah, that's a, still a bit of a battle we have going down to the line. So just got to hold it together, and he should be able to hold off Will Clark. Riders down, but that is not Noah Smurden. He is already off and through the whoops. It looks like he got through them clean, so Clark is just trying to close up and make this thing a little bit interesting down the stretch here, but it does seem like Smurden's going to hold on for fourth. This is not for metal position. This is all bragging rights at this point. These guys are far too far back at this stage, and now Clark goes down to really make it the nail in the coffin. Kingsfield looks like he'll be the last rider to bring it down for us. Making his way through the rhythm section.
All right, here we go. Cuts are about to come in as Kingsfield brings it home in 10th. Cuts at the top. And yes, indeed, Ethan Parks does get second away from Casey Cochran. Cochran with 21.5 seconds of cuts. And yeah. actually, Rogers had 11.2 seconds of cuts. So if Parks could have kept it fairly close, although he did have two seconds of cuts in his own right. But if he kept it within nine seconds, he would have had a chance to win this race. In the end, the gold medalist tonight is going to be Tanner Rogers on the Phil's PMS OMR RPF SPR of last number 22. Ethan Parks with the silver and Casey Cochran takes home the bronze. All right. And it looks like due to the fact that no heat races were ran, we do have a bit of an intermission before pit bike starts up. I did promise that I wouldn't start events before their posted times. So it looks like a 30 minute layover until pit bike starts up. All right, Unless so. no one is saying that that's not what they want. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, it's up to them just, at this everyone point. Everyone complaining that there, if there's a Moto2. <laughs> well, I'm gonna... <laughs> that was main, so yeah. All right. Yeah, we're going to take a quick 30-minute break. I'm just going to let uh, the Discord note as well and the riders, but... All right. Well, if we're going to take a 30-minute break, I'm just going to rip the FMX track for a little bit. And <laughs> uh, I'll just answer any questions you guys have in the stream chat. We'll just have a little Q&A, yeah. hang out, have a good time. And I'll try to land some backflips. I'll try to land some underflips, some 360s, 720s, double backflips, triple backflips, 540s, 900s, whatever I can get off in 30-minute time span. What do you guys want to see me try to land? I'll try to land anything at this point. Oh, 900. 900! Oh, almost had it! <laughs> oh, if only. Yeah, the... <clears throat> I have kind of been experimenting with more and more kind of styles of what you can do with freestyle and spins and things in FMX and the spine lip that I have on the back side of the quarter pipe has been the most confusing and amazing thing I've made because I can't quadruple backflip but I can do five full rotations off of it so I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it. I am figuring out some weird physics with Sim, and I am implementing them in all future tracks. <laughs> Can I attempt a kickflip? Uh, let me try to just do like a barrel roll. Barrel rolls are really... I figured that I'm out on FMX round 3, but... The person that I thought that did the best barrel rolls, personally, and I'm not trying to slight you because you do really good oh, ones no, as no, well. No, no, I, no, I respect the people who... Are nutty and sim, don't worry. I uh, I think uh, Robin Rosenwinge did him best. Robos O2. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, Robos. When he uh, he did his, like, almost Renner whips that just kept going. Mm hmm. I, I could never figure out that technique. I have I have to do, like, almost a uh, an underflip, but keep the front wheel in front. Yep. All right, let's see what else we got. We got Can You Attempt a Kick Flip? Didn't really get that. TP flip. I, th I landed one the other day or something fairly close to it. I'll try to get it on the short ramp right here. Yeah. It's kind of just like a double backflip, but that worked out pretty well. Yeah. Oh, almost bring it around. I'll call the first one the, the T TP flip. It was pretty close. Uh, 360 backflip. I mean, that's basically just a regular 360. Um, double backflip. Those are actually pretty easy in this game. Backflip the step up jump here. All right, let's get a double backflip. You guys asked for it. Oh, OJ did it. How hard is this game compared to Supercross 4? It's super hard. It's much more difficult than Supercross 4 for sure. Do you feel like yeah. MX bikes will take the place of MX Sim? I don't know about like fully take the place of, but I think that. 100% uh, there's going to be more stuff that happens in bikes that's similar to what happens in sim with official race series and things like that uh, getting involved but personally speaking about MX bikes and like this is not a slight to the community or anything like that it's simply just about where the game is at right now it's still too far off in terms of like a streamable platform I think to to reach the next level it needs to have its own yeah. camera center system integrated it needs to have um, you know, better ping and lag issues sorted for the game. 
uh, so it's like easier to see riders and it doesn't look like ridiculous watching them. Even in the, the replays that I see in the game, when someone goes back and like rewatches a demo or something like that, there's still a lot of lag and glitching, which just doesn't happen in MX Sim. JLV came up with a pretty foolproof system for that. So there's things like that that just need to, to get better, I think, before that game reaches the next level. Yeah, I, I can definitely agree with that point as well. I also am coming from the freestyle side where I like sim heavily due to how fluid its physics are and it's really just an understanding of momentum. And going over to MX bikes, I ran into a lot of issues of where it's still in a way as fluid as it does feel, it still has a sim cade attempting to be a sim type feel to me and I run into like random issues that wouldn't occur in real life. Like I go for a double flip and I lock out halfway through the second rotation. Just rotation disappeared. Yeah, I mean, I, I just, I still struggle to figure out just like basic stuff in that game, I feel like. So I feel like while they can be competitive and they can push each other, I don't think it's, it's going to be a sim killer. <clears throat> I think, uh, honestly, and, and this is like a, a crappy thing to say, but I feel like sim is like really getting close to the point where like the people that still compete and race and everything like that are like super core to the game and everything beyond that is not that core anymore like i feel like we used to have a lot of people that were just like oh this is new this is different i want to learn it i want to play it and now it's a lot of like kind of just people that have played it for a fairly decent amount of time that are still really big into it find the biggest transfer that i can oh man oh do you know what is... i could try <laughs> there's a couple that i know of um the dumb one that I know, like, in, uh, in the dramatically dumb sense, is hitting the far left quarter pipe and spining over to the far right quarter pipe, and then you can hit the quarter pipe into the roll into the best trick kind of type area. Um, that one's stupid. It took me like a day of my own time and effort even trying to get it. Get it. <laughs> I feel like I just want to hit like a big like jump to you jump can transfer send, uh, you can send the back side of the step up all the way to the landing before or yeah Let's see, where i can think I you can send the, the step up to a landings the back of the step up was a very good takeoff i found let's see i think i got one here oh first try oh. first try <laughs> oh I just coming in. corked a huge one from the the landing of the first speed and style double to the landing oh, yeah. of the second one. Hey, oh, pff, and that's buttered a booter. it. Booter. I always love that kind of style of jump. Back when um, MX versus ATV Untamed had its loading map, and there was that hidden jump where you just from you jumped landing to landing. It was like my favorite thing. So, yeah, I love. I kind of incorporated sure. that into a lot of my maps that I've made. In fact, if you actually look at FMX Round Three really closely, the starting area is mocked up off of uh, the loading map. <laughs> okay. It's like specifically the freestyle section, but yeah, that's what the first like kind of jumps you run into on FMX Round Three are. All right, I got a request to try a triple backflip, so I'm gonna try it on the Ooh. only one I've gotten close to so far. Yeah, the back of the. Is the best for that one. I got no pop for that. <laughs> that was pretty atrocious. My apologies. Ah, man. You made the other side of this so spine so steep. I'm trying to always like table over the back side of it and I suck at yeah, that. Yeah, it, it's kind of set up to go the one way in a way, but it's also set up to land the quarter as kind of a boosting quarter. Because if someone wants to start their freestyle run and do like, you know, a quarter to air, land and then trick the next quarter into the best trick lift, that'd be nutty and I want that to be an option. Am I hitting the right ramp for this? I'm pretty sure this is the only one I've gotten close to the triple on. Uh, I should double check that. I believe so, yeah. It's the one literally in the face. The ramp outside's more of a double front flip. Oh, okay. So the fate, the one that's up against the face. Okay. Yeah, the one it. that's literally in the face is the one that's prime for spin flips. All right, <laughs> got it. 
I'll try to do my best on this one. I want to get a triple. I can never get a triple off your FMX round three map or whatever it was. But... That one was hard. That one was inconsistent and like a perfect pop required. And then I did the Solnier Estate and I reworked it so I could have it as a smaller jump that looked a bit more realistic and work. And then moving on to this, the new rendition is that base directly into the spine. It's kind of a giant spine lip in a way. Ah, keep crashing on this spine. I'm just going to start going around it. Keep trying to do something stupid on the backside of it, and I just right. keep crashing every single time. If only. All right, let's try to get this. Cat, why are you puking? I uh, only got two around. I can, uh... I did it again. What am I doing? I... Uh. I can't care. All right, here we go. Let's get it again. Nope, only gonna get one around, and I'm going way long. I'm trying to get that thing where it's like the front tire like bounces and then catches like a little wheelie, and then you just get that ridiculous spin off. Oh, yeah, yeah, when you get the wheelie in and then loop off the face type situation. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Let's get, let's get myself a triple backflip here. Alright, one, uh. two, downside that! Oh, I landed uh. in the freaking takeoff of the quarter pipes. <laughs> Yeah, you gotta make sure you don't drift right. If you hit it dead straight, you're good. If you go a little left, you're also good. In fact, it's a little better. You go right, though. Nope, I went right. For the first time I got the rotation all the way around, I went right. In, in a weird way, I have a lot of, like, almost meta references to, like, real-life freestyle. So, like, don't turn right at Pastrana's foam pit. <laughs> Get a backflip around. Jesus. Get a triple off almost perfectly and then follow it up with Dude. Yeah, nothing. Yeah. The, the pop is... The hardest thing about freestyle and sim is learning the pop. That golden zone where all your possibilities are available. As soon as I land this triple, though, I'm going for 900. I got so close to it, I want it. <laughs> I believe. Ah! Not getting the same pop. Behind that. <laughs> uh, Garrett Crows wants to, wants to know, um, can you ask... Uh, Dom, what his technique oh. is for making ruts. I'm pretty familiar with the track editor, so he can go into detail. So, I have multiple tech. Um, depending on the situation, if I just need a quick and easy rut, then I'll use a, uh, like a gradient and just kind of place it. Other ways, I'll use a... I'll, I'll put a lower, like, I'll use the lowering tool in-game editor and uh, actually paint it in-game, normally with a radius not quite zero, pretty close to it, and uh, kind of smoothen it out and work it from there. Even sometimes use a road to kind of help flush it out and make it feel better, but not like this track had as much love into the um, displacement as I would have loved. I was kind of too focused on setting everything up. <sighs> I'm sucking at getting this around, and I'm just really annoyed and want to do a 900. That can occur. I mean, I might end up uh, here once I get this place of pizza in my belly. Might throw you and I as a little random demo in the middle <laughs> while we wait for the pit bikes to get ready. Okay, two. Get the third. <clears throat> two and a half. Oh, this should get us revved up for best trick, I feel like. So, for best trick, uh, do they get to hit basically any ramp they want, or is there a set ramp they have to hit? I'm a providing, like, any lip uh, to be hit, because if they have a specific jump and they have their absolute banger trick on, I don't want to restrict them in a way. So, Three. let them drop one at a time. And I did hear from Reno, Brennan, before... Uh, the broadcast started that he had dialed in a trick just today. Uh, pit bike's in about uh, 23 ish minutes, Dylan. Just because, or 20 ish minutes, because 
I don't want to start before the set time that some people may realize I might go before. Just out of respect. Two. Get the third. Get it. Come on, how do I not land that? Jesus. I'm having the same exact problem that I had trying it on the FMX round three. I just OJ it like a tiny bit and it ruins everything that I had. Yeah. Uh, you might be better off with the first or second gear pop. Probably second. But coming a bit slow and then just kind of... Oh. <coughs> oh! Oh, I landed it! It was awful! But I actually did land that one. Alright, I want a cleaner now though. I feel like I've got something dialed here. How much of money do I make a month off of YouTube? I'll just uh, pull up my bank account too. No, I mean I make a decent a decent amount. Um, what the heck am I pulling right here? What was that? It, to kind of help answer your question, Kellen is not in the realm to like live off YouTube, but also it's a nice thing to help have in pocket. <laughs> it's it's pretty much exactly what it is. Yes, like. I definitely cannot quit my job at Racer X tomorrow and be like, no, nah, I'm good. I got YouTube, but I'm, I, I do make a good like extra income off of it. And it, it does yeah. actually help more than people think. Yeah, you're definitely in that realm where you're getting, you broke the threshold where monet, it's not the minuscule monetary income that you get from YouTube. All right. Oh, only a little bit longer. Alright. I gotta get this triple because I want a 900. And I know I there's believe. only a little bit longer. Alright, I took your advice and tried to go for a second gear to third pop and it didn't work. Aw, oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> Alright, I, I give up. I just, I'm gonna say that I landed the three because I did. It just wasn't pretty. <laughs> I'm going for the nine. All right. I would say maybe hold up two seconds on that thought because I'm going to probably throw both of us in. It's just uh, what riding around so I can do something. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> I definitely cannot do a 1080. I don't think. Well, let's get a little FMX demo of you and I in there then. <laughs> Whatever they request that you can't do, I'll attempt to make up. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going for the 9. I want the 900. I'm like Tony Hawk. I'm not stopping <laughs> until we're done filming here. We're at x <laughs> Gotta get that 9 in. Oh, put me in, coach. Nah, not nah, Reno. Gotta... S Alright, here we go. Let's get this 9. Let's get this bread. <laughs> As you lay dead in a corner. Classic. Nope, seven. I missed that right uh, look, Dom, look at Dom here, he's just doing cool stuff. No big deal. <laughs> Hi! Those wheelies. Gonna hit a gnarly kicker. I overcooked overcooked the whip a little bit. <laughs> Plan was to go this way. I'm splitting all the ramps right now. Gosh, I'm getting the seven around and I just kinda like fakey landed it, but I had a, like a decent flat spin nine at one point. I just want that again. Uh, this is gonna be basically a 540. Oh. MX Sim <laughs> demo, the one y'all race on? What? No, this is uh, the no. full MX Simulator game, bro. Yeah, I was just, if you meant uh, how I was using the word demo, I meant more of like a freestyle demo that occur at like supercross races or things like that while we wait for the next event to start. Uh. People in chat want to know uh, if this was inspired by 
uh, the Red Bull Imagination map, and or are you planning on doing something like that? Ooh, I actually have been having that thought since I saw the second episode that dropped today. Behrman's uh, imagination that he built for Red Bull, that genius, beautiful landscape that he designed is uh, really tempting to be put into sim. I won't lie. I'm not sure how I didn't die there. Excuse me? I did know that I'm halfway there to 100k. We've been at 50k for a while, but we are very close to 100k. Yeah, I was kind of shocked when I last uh, saw and it was like in the high 80s. I was like, oh my goodness. Oh my gosh, I'm just not getting the same pop. All right, I got this triple flip for your viewers for you. Dylan says we just had an earthquake. I, I, I don't know where he lives, but I have not felt oh. anything where I live yet. A little short. Oh, there's, I am a little scared pop. for the day I feel the earthquake. Ah, damn. <laughs> Fault zone I live on is, uh, we're not expected to feel an earthquake unless it's going to destroy cities. So. Yikes. Not, not looking forward to the day I feel an earthquake. <laughs> oh, thanks, Cobra Justin. Thanks for tuning in. I'm glad that you, uh, enjoy the content, and thanks for becoming a sub. Oh, Australia? Yeah, no, we're not in Australia. Yeah, no. No, I'm playing with uh, Saulnier, not Tiburino, the other Dom. Yeah. The uh, the Dom who's not good at racing, except if you look like five or six years back. I mean, you made some mains. I, I've made... I've made main. I've made main. <laughs> and... My, my results in mains are either 17th or 6th. I'm, I'm between the 19th and 6th range. That's where I like to... I'm not anywhere else. <laughs> I believe you summed it up beautifully when uh, you gave me that shout-out at 2020 Atlanta. When it was... Uh, he's just sometimes not here, but other times he's, he's right up front, even competing for wins. And I'm like, yeah, that, that's my racing career. <laughs> Like two laps to go, all of a sudden in 19th. Yeah, that happened. <laughs> what? Jared Nugent is subscribed on all seven of his accounts. <laughs> okay, all right, thanks. My goodness, that is a uh... oh, that's one collection you got there. Dom is from Canada, Canada. Yeah, Canada. Oh sure, there you go. All right, I'm going for the big runs now. Oh yeah, big one. Ooh, big old flare though. Yeah, but I'm knuckling. Ah. Do I remember the rider Linz? I think he got a championship in 2014 or something. Yeah, Connor Linz, absolutely. Yeah, Connor Linz, yeah. Legendary rider. Moved on to MX Bikes, now shreds it. Cannot seem to get this quarter pipe either right now. I'm struggling with it too. There's a road is still on. Oh, it is. oh, come on, come on, come on, come around! Why? I landed that, but why? <laughs> Oh, thanks, Zig Barlow. I appreciate that. Why can't I just get the pop anymore? I'm just getting 720 after 720, and I can't get the 9 anymore. Did Why didn't I just land it that first time? I almost had it. Happened. This one is... The lip over here is also quite good for it. The 9 on the backside by the best trick jumps. I definitely also... feel like Tony Hawk right now. <laughs> With, uh... With probably oh, there the fact it is. that the road is on. Come on, come oh. around! Oh, oh my gosh. Nines are a little techy. I always found that a front brake tap was kind of required somewhere. I cringed your name, Jaron Nugent? Is that not how you say it? It's J-A-R-O-N, Jaron, or Jaron. Nugent, N-U-G-E-N-T, Nugent? Nugent? <laughs> I, I, mean, I feel like Nugent's a safer bet on that one. Yeah, because there is literally a famous singer, Ted Nugent, with the exact same right? spelling. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, man. That's a... What other pronunciations exist? I mean, we are English tainted, so... <laughs> wow. 
Wow. All right, Kimmy's in wants to visit Canada someday. Oh uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, I definitely recommend visiting Canada. Uh, any part really is a nice place. I mean, if you know what the Midwest states look like, you know what the Midwest Canada looks like. So we can kind of move past that part. But the coasts are brilliant. I love living in Canada. It's gorgeous to wake up here every day. All right, so yes, um, the pit bike MX race is going to start in about 10 minutes here, and then best trick yeah. is about 55 minutes from now, roughly yeah, speaking. Yeah, they should be, yeah, just to allow enough time to run the racing and pit bike, and then SMX just follow shortly after. I mean, yeah, best trick. Words. Just call me Brad, he says. <laughs> Come around! Oh, this 900 is killing me, dude! Absolutely tattered over here. I just cannot bring it around. Well, at least it's starting soon, and move on with this. It's, it's always a little bit of stress running events for people who are unaware of that. It's uh, it's never as fun as participating. Definitely not. <laughs> uh, Colby Botex says Heckman lived about an hour and a half from me before I moved to Tennessee. I have so many videos of him launching the big double and triple at Moreland. I want to see you guys do more videos together. I mean, I would love for Heckman to do more videos with me, but he's cold turkey me. He went silent. I said, let's do Jacob's Ladder, and he hasn't hit me up. <laughs> yeah. I think I saw Heckman throw in chat earlier. Uh, thanks, Grant. I appreciate that. I uh, definitely am not near as good as I was in 2017, so apologies for my declining skill set in Sim, but appreciate that you still watch and are interested in the content that I make. Oh, come on! That was so close. How do you spell bananas, dude? It's bananas, dude. B-A-N-A-N-A-S. <gasps> bananas. I feel like there are people watching this stream that might not get that reference and it, it kind I, of makes I don't me sad. know if they would I don't even know what I'm doing anymore at this point yeah no I understand this is how I feel when I go for a one-shot video and I'm just stuck on a certain feature like that stuff drives me nuts uh, the pit bikes <laughs> the pit bikes are just gonna be two 12-minute motos yeah, two 12 minute plus one lap motos. Oh my gosh. Just running it like a national type event. I can at least start getting it somewhat set up for it as we're. So, boys, everyone. I don't even know what I'm doing. I like can't get the same rotation anymore. <laughs> don't worry. I'm going to alleviate your headache. <laughs> our skins are horrid? What? I don't I think our skins are all right. All right, so this we is the pit bike race coming up next. We got It'll, UID yeah. grab coming up. The yeah, UID grab will be coming up yeah, in what 7ish minutes. All right. Once I find my phone, I can confirm the time countdown, because clock on my computer is wrong. Yeah, six minutes. Haha. <laughs> there definitely ain't no hollaback, girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I miss Punk Gwen. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> Punk Gwen. Punk, well... Pop Punk Gwen. <laughs>
regardless, still punk, still somewhat anti culture, part of the counterculture. <laughs> the model's bad. I mean, it's Jeremy's Honda. I mean, it's a bad Honda. Oof. Take Look at all these fitties! Oh, no. Why am I on the gate? Who put me on the gate? Ah, the gate was allowed. Horse played everyone. <laughs> Time to clap some of these kids, dude. They ain't got <laughs> nothing for me. Alright, they got some for me. <laughs> Ooh, getting dragged to the ground. Okay, but really, I just got a nine dollar donation, nine dollars for the nine hundred, so I need to go land it now. <laughs> oh boy! People demand it. Demanding, <sighs> demanding the nine. It's been twenty-two years since Tony Hawk landed it. I gotta bring it back. And it's been like, when did he do his last nine? Was it like three years ago? Four? Something then, like that, yeah. Then he landed his last, probably seven twenty, like this year, I think he said. He's just like running out of steam. Come on! Right. <laughs> Play cat and mouse with them. Nobody has the models, bro. We, we gotta release the cat and mouse game. We got all the models and stuff ready, we just gotta release it. Oh, my 720s are dialed. I've got 720s <laughs> all day long. Just can't bring the 9s around, apparently. 9s are on. 9s have always been awkward for me. I almost find 1260s easier than nines. The rotation comes around nicer if you get it. <laughs> Alright. Get close. Get close. Uh, it's landed back to back 540s. Come on. Come on! Why did it start flipping like that? Uh. It's <laughs> 690. That was my old racing number back before I knew what the number 69 referred to. Oh, I got clipped in midair. Oh, no. I wasn't going to get it around, but anyway. Oh yeah, dude. Who's excited for MXRS ATV Legends, dude? This is how legends are made. Heck yeah. I mean, I've heard a lot of people are already starting to trash on it, and I'm kind of in the same boat as you, where it's the, uh, just wait until there's some form of playable version of it before you trash it. <laughs> hey everybody, I'm Randy Newman. This is how legends are made. <laughs> Got something nutty, doesn't bring it around. Oh. Yeah, Reno apparently has something dialed in for best trick after 50, so I'm curious to see what what it is, because he didn't even show me. Just rude. I show him my tricks. I just can't Ooh. get the rotation for this anymore. I'm almost done. <laughs> I'm almost about to give up. Almost. The $9 isn't worth it. The $9 is so worth it. I want this 900 <laughs> so bad. I want it clean. I want it buttery. Oh, August Sanders just landed on me. <laughs> I'm really curious to see what uh, all the FMX riders tonight are going to be bringing to see. Whoa, really oh, oh, pff, pff, pff. It's got absolutely plowed by Zach Palm. <laughs> Oh, this might be it. Come on, why does it extra rotate? What? I finally got the pop and it just goes. Doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> All right. 
We are about to grab UIDs here. Seconds are counting down. Alright, come on. One more attempt. One more attempt. We got this. 900? Not the 900. That's another stupid 720. Yeah, go ahead. Get on me, Zach Palm. Carry the team on my back, dude. <laughs> One last attempt. I have time. I believe in you. You got it. <laughs> uh, I'm rolling down the backside of the jump like an idiot. Got it. <laughs> oh, not quite the pop. Landed Oof. 720 backwards. Perfect again. Yep, again. Try to get over there before you run the script. Oh, I got hit! It's turning into something ridiculous! Oh, I didn't land it. Alright, and then I should have. Oh, oh, one, one more time, yes. one more time. Hey, look at that. Why did you go through that? Oh, I got my hit God. in the air again! <laughs> the clip Reno. If that's the case. Oh yeah, no, it's already good. Good. Alright. Shout out Devin Davis. Dropping off a two dollar donation, telling you all people to hit that like button, dude. Hit it! If you haven't hit it already, what are you doing? <laughs> right? Smash that. Destroy it. <laughs> Brutalize that like button. Fatality. Fatality. Double kill. <laughs> Running rampage. Alright. Here we go. Well, almost had that Warm one. Up. All right, time for the pit bike donations. Oh wait, no, it's just a pit bike race here at the MXS <laughs> games. <laughs> pit bike donations. I love it. I mean, X Games history. The X Games was started as um the counterculture Olympics, in a way, is all the games, all the sports that don't make it into the Olympics. So this is his warm-up lap, correct? Yeah, this is the warm-up. <laughs> Throw him in? Nah, fam. Alright. Look at these 50cc machines absolutely shredding! What is that dude's name? Taylor Miller. Menace Mentality? Dogs what? Racing? What? <laughs> okay. Jack Hurst, he loves me. I love him back. Try a rerun of this. Yeah. Ethan Parks, I'm pretty sure we have a 125 guy. in that list, so I'm not wide. Alright. Uh, one lap on this track will take roughly however long it takes for Hayden Stevenson to finish this one. Just listen to those 50cc machines per. Alright, that guy should be in this moto. His name popped up on the script that time. Come on, so. Devin. You know I love you back, too. I love your front too. <laughs> hey -o. Oh. All right, so this is it, or are we doing another pray lap? This is uh, Moto One. It should be. He should be in. If he isn't in, then I'll be timed out. Why do you have to time out? Like, time out. He's on time out. I can't. I can't do much about you timing out of the moto. All right, well, this might be Moto 1. Oh, Tanner Rogers hits the <laughs> gate. Gonna be Moto 1. He's going to have to reconnect whenever he can, and I'm going to try for Moto 2. 
Hayden Stevenson up the inside, ripping the whole shot. It's Jake Spees dropping down the hill. He's going to take the race lead away as they all funnel in at the bottom of the hill. Oh, contact! And they go to either side of the step up. Spees retains the lead. Everybody trying to get some momentum on these 50cc machines. It is so difficult. But it's Spees, Stevenson. Oh, Tanner Rogers gets absolutely plowed from behind. Zach Palm taking no prisoners today. Rasmus Balzer is here as well. Got Seth Shirley. Look at all these racing dudes. Josh Bellinger, Will Clark. Uh-oh. Balzer up the inside of Zach Palm's going to move his way up into third. And Seth Shirley, they're just out here bullying Zach Palm at this point. They're going around that dude up into third and fourth, respectively. Oh, Will Palm even get the finish line? He's going to have to back out. Oh, Shirley. He's going to need a lawyer for that case because he's gone down. Will Clark has moved into fourth place, balls are third, and the lead battle is hot and heavy. Jake, money sign P, money sign E, out here just giving it on the District Designs 216, but Hayden Stevenson on his AEO Power Sports 312 is right there. Let's see if he sends him off the berm. No, he funnels in behind. This is going to be a 12-minute plus one-lap moto, and it is all on the line right now. The opening lap carnage has gotten to quite a few people. Zach Palm didn't quite clear the and absolutely someone in the corner, and it led to all sorts of chaos and huge gaps already forming. Jake Spees, Spees slides out out front, and that's going to put Hayden Stevenson into the race lead as he goes over the race tech finish line jump. I think it's race tech. Yeah, it is. Rasmus Balzer is still right there. Now up into second place. Spees has slipped back to third. Got Will Clark there in fourth. Troy Beinert there in fifth. Our silver medalist from Straight Rhythm, Riley Owensby, here in sixth. Double medal winner last night in the best whip in the quarter pipe. Kyler Smith is right there as well. Seth Shirley. This is a two moto format. So is it uh, scored Olympically or is it scored like real motocross? This is going to be scored, uh, yeah, like real motocross. And All right. Out first is a 25, 23, 22, 1 breakdown types game. It's not the new Supercross updated format, but... Yeah. Alright. Oh, Kyler Smith goes for the kill on Riley Owensby. He kills himself instead. He's on the ground. Got Will Clark up here dealing with Ooh. Troy Biner. Biner just lays him out on Bullied the ground. Him. Little RKO out of nowhere. Just no respect for the man. As Stevenson starts to weave his way through some lap traffic, he's got the 69 machine right there. That's Robert Wageman. Oh, no, it's not. It's... Oh, as Stevenson gets oh. into him, goes down. Balls That's going to cause some around. serious chaos as Balzer goes into the race lead. He's trying to get around oh. these guys. He's getting Stevenson. sent off the inside of the track. Stevenson had to turn around to get back up the hill. That's going to give Spee second. So Rasmus Balzer, the rapid-moving Dane on the Motorsport.com number 50 machine, takes over the race lead. Getting that hip jump around the corner at the top of the hill, and he's looking ooh so silky smooth. But he has had a tendency in pro motocross of late to throw it away after he's led for a little bit. So let's see if he's warming up his arm to toss this one as well. Up and over that finish line jump. We still got oh, eight minutes plus a lap to go in Moto 1 here of the pit bike motocross final. At the MXS games, balls are going through the tough blocks a little bit there. Here is Spees. And Stevenson, still second and third. Oh, Stevenson, oh. he's going to lay it down again. Yeah, we got some gaps pretty forming kind of hard out here, so see what battles might form with the front runners still running in their uh, lines, respectively. Troy Beinert now up into fourth place. Will Clark there still in fifth. Owensby is now sixth. Shirley is seventh. Bellinger in eighth. Bednar is ninth. And Kyler Smith rounds out the top 10. Gavin Smith is behind him in 11th. McPherson 12th. Menace Mentality is in 13th. Zach Palm in 14th. Jack Hurst, I love him. He's in 15th. Ethan Parks in 16th. Ryan Privateer in 17th. Tanner Good Rogers is out of this race. And Taylor Miller, oh man, he did not make the call. Jake Melton has fell asleep on the gate.
As Balzer continues to lead down the hill, almost to the front door there at the bottom, he has got himself an 11.3 second lead. He just laid down his best lap of the race at a 55.9. Balls are looking pretty darn good for someone that has not competed in a single event so far in the MXS games. He is coming in fresh and ready to rip here. In and out of the tough blocks, going to go across and I think just almost put the 319 there on the ground. Yeah, looks like Balls are, uh, said I'm showing up to the X Games simply for the 50 medal and the 50 medal only. Yeah, he wants to win a gold medal. <laughs> Wants to eat some of that fresh gold flake. I believe Rasmus actually participated in the first pit bike championship held on Sim back with me and Spinelli way back in the day. Deep dive. Like 2012 championship. Dang. Uh, Bowser's working through lap traffic with relative ease. Jake Spees almost got cleaned out by a oh, lapped rider. The and lap riders are having their own battle, and Spees is having to fight his way through it. Stevenson might be able to capitalize if, uh, oh! Oh, Spees and McPherson side by side. McPherson is a lap down, though. So these guys come down to the bottom of the hill, and Spees getting sent into the corner. Stevenson is definitely closing up. Like you mentioned, Spees getting a little squirrely. Ooh. And Stevenson, Stevenson getting to stay low in the corner, but can he get the triple? I'm not sure. He's going to have to back out. Stevenson is getting ganged up as, oh, McPherson gets laid out by Zach Palm. Pure carnage in the lap riders around here as the lead lap riders are trying to pass through. Double around the hip at the top of the hill. It's a 26 second lead now for Balzer. He is absolutely taken off at the Just front of this field. Gone. He has lapped his way up to... It's like Josh Bellinger is a lap down. Seth Shirley, the last rider on the lead lap. Well, now it's uh, Owensby, I should say. So Ken Balzer do the Richard Charmander and lap the whole field. Yeah, he's like hunting them down. Which is a little awkward because he's up front. Spee's still in second. Stevenson is right there in third. They're oh, still yeah, very close. To heat up. Also, a battle for fourth between Troy Bernard and uh, Will Clark. Yeah, Bynard there on the 51, closing up on the 114 of Will Clark. Who's going to come out on top of this battle? Rider down at the bottom of the hill, but he is a lapped rider, so these guys are going to split him. Bynard's got a great Whoa. drive to the outside, but he Whoa. runs into Will Clark's rear tire and goes down. Looking back up at Stevenson for Spice here. Beinert forgot the cardinal rule of racing, and that is do not just run into your competitors. You'd like to try to move out a line and go around them if possible. Yeah, different lines will... I, I thought I had a saying, it's gone. My brain is uh, worked too hard right now, it seems. Oh, oh no. there's a stack up at the bottom of the hill, and Jake Spies is in it. Speech. So Stevenson he goes by. But Stevenson had to nearly roll the double up the hill, so he lost a little bit of time. And he looks like he's all good now, though. Bowser is weaving through people, getting around Ethan Parks there, putting him yet another lap down. So he's lapped up to... Binert is a lap down. Shirley is being lapped right now in fifth place. Oh, Spee's down in a corner, so he's stuck on the hillside, it looks like. So Stevenson now going to have plenty of time up ahead in second place as Shirley now dives off the track. Fifth place has been lapped. Now battle for third between Will Clark and Spees. Spees is almost putting Zach Palm down on the ground. Oh, the different lines taken there almost brought them together. Clark up the inside as Spees gets away a little bit over this finish line. Jump just has to oh, jump over a downed rider. Carnage left and right over that finish line. Stevenson is absolutely gone from these guys, and now Balzer is starting to close up on our battle for third. So Rasmus Balzer has taken off out front. I keep forgetting that Balzer is hunting them down a lap ahead. It's just, it's unnecessary. <laughs> uh, he's just rubbing it in, dude. He's going for that Dick Charmander lap in the field. He's going for the uh, Ricky Carmichael Award. Spee 
He's trying to run away from Will Clark. As Balzer goes down with the race lead, he was getting together with Zach Palm a little bit there. This isn't going to matter in the slightest. He's still got a massive advantage. And he didn't go down in uh, any poor spot. He was at the top of the hill, able to get going at rel with relative ease. Going to go from a uh, dramatic 34-second lead to probably a lesser dramatic 24-second lead-ish. Stevenson trying to close up from second place still. As uh, Balzer's internet appears to have checked out for a moment. Uh-oh, that is not good for the Dane. Let's see what's happening with him. Otherwise, Hayden Stevenson might be about to come through to take the lead away. Balzer has still not come back. We're monitoring chat to see if he times out. It's a real close game. He's got roughly one minute before that timeout kicks in, so... Uh... I think Ooh. he's getting timed out. This is not going to look good after leading so much of this one. He's got to come back quickly. Oh, oh man. Right before the end of the moto as well. There's only a little... Oh, that's no, Taylor, Taylor Miller. Miller okay. timing out. Psyched me out there. There Taylor it Miller. is. And there's Rasmus. Oh, no. Wow, Rasmus Balzer times out. So Hayden Stevenson goes to the race lead now on the 312 AEO Power Sports machine. Jake Spies moves to second. Will Clark is now up into third. Seth Shirley is now in fourth place. Troy Biner in fifth. Balzer is still in sixth, but he's timed out. So that is, should, that is really rough. Should lose that spot to uh, Riley Owensby here now. Owensby going to go through into sixth place. Balzer slips back to seventh. Depending on when these guys, how many people he lapped and where everything is going to end up, I, I wonder if he is still going to score some decent points out of this. Right? Because he was on lap 11. Wow. Okay. So they're on to 13 now. So... Well, the white flag is going to come out next time by for Stevenson. Stevenson has lapped up to Owensby. So some of these guys are going to be short a lap. Stevenson is also about to lap Josh Bellinger again to put him two laps down. Ethan Parks as well. Seth Shirley was trying to put on a grind to catch up to Will Clark, but it seems like he tucked it somewhere that last lap. So I think our medal positions are going to be pretty set in stone unless anything dramatic happens this last lap. Well, Stevenson's going to take the white flag this time through. He's got a sizable advantage on Spies and Clark, as mentioned. Shirley fourth, Beiner there in fifth, has Stevenson right behind him. And more guys getting lapped, and we're trying to figure out how far down the order perhaps Balzer might fall. He's almost made it to the back. He's he's down in 15th now. I think he might hold off 16th, but I don't know if he's going to manage better than that. Biner goes off the track, so he has now been lapped as well by Stevenson. Stevenson's just got a few more corners to navigate here. Click off the race victory here. Final sequence of corners for Hayden Stevenson. And he didn't exactly get it right away, but eventually got it gifted to him. Hayden Stevenson takes Moto 1 here in the pit bike race at the MXS Games. Jake Spies looks like he will finish up in second place, barring a late crash here. Looks to be all good, though, to me. Yeah, he should hold out. Clark trying to put the charge in just along with Shirley. So Spies over the line. Clark now coming, and Shirley, like you said, also trying to close up here. Shirley was uh, probably a little bit disappointed in himself for the Supermoto event, so trying to make amends here. Going to end up fourth behind Clark. And Biner, first man to lap down in fifth. Sixth for Owensby. Oh, wow. It's going to be seventh for Kyler Smith, it seems. Seth Shirley put the fastest lap down besides... Anything maybe Balzer might have put. Yeah, besides Balzer, Seth's really put the fastest lap of the race down on that last lap. So McPherson crosses in 8th, ninth for Josh Bellinger. Zach Palm was 10th, 11th for Ethan Parks. 12th for Ryder Bednar. 13th went to Gavin Smith. 14th, looks like it's going to be Jack Hurst as he's making his way around. 
Bowser will end up 15th unofficially in this, as Menace Mentality is going to get 16th, 17th for Ryan, 18th for Tanner Rogers. Classic little. Taylor Miller and Jake Milton make up 19 and 20. We're just waiting on Jack Hurst to wrap it up. I don't mind watching Jack Hurst. I did. Oh, get that hip. Oh, pogo's the nose into the ground. Wow. Riley Owensby wants us to alert Lapras to move. <laughs> Laugh out loud, indeed. I can, uh, I can definitely agree with that sentiment. So Hurst over the line. Let's take a look at cuts. Wow, Zach Palm goes from tenth to twelfth on cuts. Dirty little thief he is. <laughs> it's going to be Hayden Stevenson taking the win though in Moto One of the pit bike motocross racing action here at the MXS Games. So Moto Two coming up. Can he get it done again? Check coming up. Oh, Jack Hurst missed a timing gate. He was all over 13th place, man. You hate to see it. What an absolute hate Daytona disappointment. <laughs> I know about Daytona disappointments. <laughs> I believe the most mind-boggling race of my career was when I was battling for a top three in 2015 Daytona in the 450 class in a race that I didn't even qualify top 40, and I made it to the main somehow. And I was yes. battling for the top three for half of it, and then I went to 21st in less than two laps. It's <laughs> the way to do it right there. It's, it's, it, it sums up my entire racing career. All right, so this is warm-up lap, right? Yeah, just a quick warm-up to make sure everyone's on the gate. No one complains at me. Looks like no one's complaining at me. That's fantastic. Look, Taylor Miller's even in the... Congratulations, you made it. <laughs> All right, put them over to a restart call. Do a quick re-execution script. Yeet. All right, here we go. Pit bike motocross action. Moto2 coming up. Another 12 minute plus one lap race. Can Stevenson sweep the motos and get a gold medal for himself here? Of course, don't miss it. We got best trick coming up next. It's going to be a very fun one to watch to see how that one shakes down. So you won't want to miss that coming up on the other side of this pit bike motocross action here at the MXS Games. All right, time for Moto2 here in Pit Bikes. Who's gonna get that all important hole shot? A lot of bar oh, banging. Oh, Stevenson tucking it to the inside, it looks like, grabbed it. Yeah, did the exact same thing. The second Moto as he did in the first one, get to that inside to take the hole shot. So it's Stevenson leading from Zach Palm. Oh, Balzer's back, but he is down early on with Biner on the uphill and a lot of riders down at the bottom of the hill so stevenson getting away with zach palm palm is trying to take the lead away from him quickly though up the inside but doesn't get the step on so stevenson now leads oh he's gonna short the hip jump a little bit he goes off oh, the track way wide in that corner yeah palm however just not having enough momentum to keep up with him so stevenson now gonna try to check out front here for a little bit Balzer has moved his way up into third, though, so I don't think he's going to let he Stevenson leave that easy. So it's Stevenson from Palm and Balzer at the end of the first official lap here. Squirrely, a.k.a. Seth Surly here in fourth. 
Troy Beinert there in fifth. Will Clark in sixth. Kind of cut up underneath on Beinert. Already feel very spread out after just one lap of racing here. Yeah, the, the carnage of 50s can really separate riders, especially on a 50 track with elevation. Oh, balls are pushing a little wide in that corner as he's hunting down Palm for second. So Rasmus Ballers, Balls are pretty much can only play spoiler at this point. Well, 15-1 is not going to do it, especially with Stevenson out front. Balls are certainly closing up on Zach Palm here very quickly, and we'll see whether or not he can make a quick pass on him and set sail right after Hayden Stevenson out front. Up and over that finish line jump. Balls is going to push to the outside and carry some momentum. Turns to the inside in the next turn, and he's got the pass done there on Zach Palm. A nice one in the end for the 50. Steps down the hill, and we'll see some lap times coming in here. 56-8 last time through for Balzer. Stevenson yeah, at 56-8 as, as well. as well. It's, uh, it's going to be a tight race between them. However, I think something interesting we see right now, Seth Shirley is currently two positions ahead of Will Clark. Those are the two who, were <clears throat> who finished third and fourth for fighting it out for the bronze medal. With how they currently sit, Seth Shirley will be getting the bronze. Oh, rider down, and Balzer hits him. It wasn't oh. Stevenson. It was a lapped rider there. He stays ahead of Zach Palm, but he loses some ground there to Stevenson. Palm now follows Balzer through over that finish line jump. Stevenson has pulled out a nice little gap now because of it. And like you mentioned, Seth Shirley, he has closed up a little bit on this group as well. Zach Palm is now... Pretty equidistant between Shirley and balls are ahead of him. Yeah, also Trey. Uh, yeah, Troy. Oh, Bainard, Palm uh, down. Oh, Palm is down. Yeah, that's going to be a little upsetting for him. That's going to allow Troy to get through here. He seems to be trying to push his way up through the field as well. Not too far off this pack, or at least off of Seth Shirley. Palm got stuck going up the hill as well and just lost a bunch of more oh. positions to Clark oh, Spees a, going by. Their Spees are second place finishing rider from last moto trying to work through some of that lap traffic already makes his way into fifth place Beinert is fourth Seth Shirley in third balls are here in second but Stevenson continues to lead he just got crossed over though by a lap rider rejoining the track that's gonna oh. allow balls are to inch up a little bit more 5.5 seconds is the gap of 55.4 last time by for Balzer. He has to go way high in that berm, though, to avoid a down rider. Yeah, oh, yeah, no, Balzer losing quite a bit of time. Maybe Seth Shirley can gain some ground there. A bit of a poor line in the corner, it looked like. Turn around back up the hill as Balzer watches what the gap was now extend out to 8 seconds even. As he continues pushing the pace to try to close up, he's got some good lines working. He's definitely riding the track very well, but navigating through lap traffic so far for him has been the issue. So with that lapper issue, he does a 58-2, a 57-8 for Stevenson last time through. And like you said, Shirley starting to close up a little bit because of those issues that Balzer had. Yeah, definitely. Apologies for that. My girlfriend was getting upset that I uh, I had a pizza. I had spoiled myself after uh, making this event. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and oh, Seth Shirley snap. goes down. Shirley going down. That might give Troy He's the ability to, turn to get around. around him. Yeah, he's stuck on the hill. The lack of power really being a detriment falling in some spots. Gets the it's ship and ride it. Spees get up into fourth as well, so his hunt to try to get a medal is not gone yet. Shirley got going just in time to get hit from behind by Tom oh. Ryan of the Beans team. So he went down Oof. again. And it's really Had shuffled a things around. set of events there for Seth Shirley. Yeah, so now he falls behind Will Clark. Jake Spees went through, so did Beinert, as mentioned. Balls are up ahead, and Stevenson has pulled out. Pretty comfortable little gap here coming up to the halfway point of this moto. It looks like he is well on his way to going 1-1 here in the pit bike race and winning that gold medal. 
Bowser might be the only person to stop him from winning this race, but I yeah. think it's going to be enough still, though, for obviously Stevenson to win with the 1 2 scores. And with how it currently is, Troy Bynar is in the perfect position to steal bronze away from Will Clark as. If Spees can hold on to where he is, he'll just narrowly edge out for Silver. Beinart getting a fifth last moto, and uh, Spees being our second place finisher last moto. Clark would have a 3-5, uh, and Beinart with a 5-3. Ty gives it to him. Oh, and Beinart down, though. <coughs> wow, Balzer just went 55 flat versus a 56-2 out of Stevenson, and they're Ooh. starting to really weave through some lap traffic as well, so this could... Flip the tides a little bit for this battle for the uh, win, potentially, in this one. Balls are certainly moving there on that motorsport.com number 50. Stevenson is most certainly having to deal with quite a bit of lap traffic as well, so that's going to all fall to Balzer's hand now. He has to go through about four riders before he could even see Stevenson ahead of him. Yeah, Stevenson with a couple small bobbles trying to, he could have been a bit smoother through that rhythm as to see if Balzer can do it, and he does. So that's going to be a couple more tenths for him, probably. Yeah, 55.5 versus a 58.7, so right there, he just gained three whole seconds back on him, down to just 5.9 seconds. Still about four minutes and a lap left to go in this one. Balzer jumps up the inside there of Christopher McPherson. Now he sees, I think, is that Beinert perhaps ahead of him, or? Uh, that would be Owensby, I believe, that he is coming up on. So yeah, Owensby going to go a lap down to Balzer as Balzer is just trying to work up to the race leader, and that gap is continuing to come down. Down to just two seconds. Stevenson is really starting to lose it here at the front. Dealing with the lap traffic and the pressure of trying to win this gold medal. Doesn't need to win this race with Balzer coming up, but I'm sure he would love to go 1-1 if he could. Oh, a little mistake for a lapped rider. Still ahead of Stevenson, not letting him go. And Balzer is closed oh, right up, and Balzer gets together with a lapped rider, and he goes down as well, and he's off the bike. That might actually give a decent little advantage to uh, Aiden Stevenson as Troy Beinart is way too far. Yeah, Balzer had to do a complete 360 to even get over that little uh, roller hill right there. So Stevenson has certainly stretched this thing out. Just when it was about to get close, Balzer and the lap rider come together, and it's all back at square one again for Balzer to have to come forward. Yeah, even with that horrible uh, recovery that Balzer had to do, Beinart's only gained about, yeah, 15 seconds from it. He's still 13 back. It's going to be a... Uh hard charge for him if he wants to compete with the front two runners. He does have speeds right on his butt though. That's a fun little thing to see. Oh, and Balzer's down again? Oh yeah, absolutely. He did just go down wow. again, so Chaos. that... Didn't lose him second place, but certainly Biner oh. much closer as is Spies. Yeah, Beinart with that small bubble is going to allow Spies to close up a bit as well. Up and over that big double jump there. Oh, we got some carnage behind balls or Beinart and Spies are going to be coming in too. It does seem like there's a pretty hefty group of lapped riders that Beiner and Spies are now kind of running into, like you mentioned. Yeah. And Balls are just about to kind of clear all of them. He's got a oh. couple more to get through. Beiner had overjumped the triple step down and had blown off his legs, so it's going to give Spies the third place position. So Jake Spies moves up to third. That should pretty much guarantee him the silver at this point. Yeah. Oh, but he's down now. Come yeah. on, guys. Let's try to hold on to our medals that we have. <laughs> Off the inside of the track there is Jake Spies. So Biner goes back through into third. It's still Balzer in second. Hayden Stevenson is looking at going 1-1 here. 
to stamp the gold medal. Again, Seth Shirley has worked his way into fourth. That he's trying to find his way, maybe in contention for a medal, but he'd be he'd have to finish two positions ahead of Spees, and one ahead of Clark. We actually currently have a three-way tie for silver if they finish in these positions. And the tiebreaker is the second moto, I assume. Yeah. Uh, this is gonna get close. Biner is a little ways up the road from Seth Shirley. You also have Will Clark trying to close in from behind as well. He is right there in the mix. Oh, Riders Shirley down at the bottom of the hill. Down. Shirley's down. Yes, he is. Will Clark gonna slide through and probably Spees as well. Yep, Spees also yeah. makes it by. And time is just about to expire. Where is our leader, Stevenson? He's coming up the hill right now, so white flag about to be waving. Time now expired. He turns left for Stevenson until he gets that white flag. So there it is. White flag is a waving. Oh, Hayden Stevenson out front. So. The medals are flip flopping around besides Stevenson. He has that gold on lock if he can stay out where he is. But Speed's going down again, allowing Shirley back past. I'm not even sure. I can't keep up with who's silver and bronze anymore. Certainly going to be a tight knit battle. More riders down coming up the hill, but a couple lappers in there as well. There's Seth Shirley. Getting ahead of all that chaos. Will Clark has pulled away from it as well. Beinert is still in third. Balzer in second. And Hayden Stevenson's got a couple more turns to go. He will wrap up the end of Moto2 and allow the rest of the riders to finish out their positions and see who can vie for that silver and bronze medals. So it's going to be a perfect 1-1 performance as Hayden Stevenson takes home the gold medal here in the pit bike motocross racing action at the MXS Games in 2021. 15-2 will be the scores for Balzer. It's not going to be enough to get him on the podium, but he probably could have went on to actually win this event had he not had a disconnect in that first moto. Yeah, Beinart with a currently looking at a 5-3, and Will Clark with a 3-4, giving Clark looking like the advantage as Spies finished out sixth. 2-6 is actually going to hold Spees from getting a medal unless Seth Shirley can make an argument somewhere. So 3-4 for Will Clark, that would be 38 points. And yeah, Spees and finishing up in 6, like you said, going to pick up uh, 37 points. Yeah. Should allow Will Clark if he can just finish out ahead of Seth Shirley, which yeah, he, he does. Did. So Shirley crosses the line in 5th. That will give Will Clark the silver medal, barring any penalties. Yep, uh, do we have... Oh, looks like someone missed something, maybe? And Spies will get the bronze medal as we await for... somebody to finish up, I think. Finished? I think it is. Let's check. I don't know who is sitting there that hasn't finished. Was it? Aha, I figured it out. Alright, there we go, and ooh, we do have some cuts actually, as Will Clark jumps up to third, that really solidifies it for him. Biner yeah. drops to fourth, Stevenson does still go 1-1, one, one. and the rest stayed identical. So, it is going to be Stevenson picking up the gold medal here in the pit bike racing. With Will Clark getting the silver, and right, and Troy Bernard getting the bronze. Or is it Spies? Just... Or is Spies with the 2-6, correct? Yep. Cool. Yeah, then he should still be... Oh, he went 5-4. Oh, God. I don't know now. I have to... Mapping-wise, yeah, I guess... I guess Spies was barely holding on, right? By one point. Uh... Yeah, 5-4 yeah. versus 2-6. A 2-6 would, would top it. By one point, yeah. So, that's gonna look like Spies for bronze. So All right. Speeds the bronze, Will Clark the silver, and Stevenson the gold here in the pit bike race. Now it is time for best trick. Yeah. Coming up next. 
And best trick is going to be uh, six qualified and three or er, invited riders. I'm sorry. Three attempts each. Judge best score counts. So are you going to give them a score after each run? I'm going to be giving them like I'm going to be displaying the scores between each set of runs. So riders will go in three and then I'll give them their score. And then we're like, yeah, the riders, a whole set of riders will go. I'll give them their score and then repeat for the full three runs. Okay, cool. So I'll, uh, I'll also put a, a graphic up on the broadcast after each run cool. is done to show uh, who's where. Awesome. Gotta get it. Intermission Entertainment coming out of me. We're going to try to land a 900. <laughs> All right. Good. Just have to quickly do this. See how well it works. Nine hundred. All right. I believe we are set up to give best trick a green light. All right, best trick coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I think this is the moment most people have been waiting for. People want to know what is going to happen here in the best trick competition, the final event of the night. Three runs, and the best individual score counts. Your rider list for the best trick competition, Reno, Brennan, August Sanders, Jet Wisdom, Jake Spies. Casey Cochran and Jake Melton. So give us a little bit of a flavor of what we should be expecting here. Um, I'm thinking with the variety of riders we have in here, you can definitely expect to see some... I think a cork 7 is probably going to be a safe trick, and a triple flip might be probably on the safer side while still pushing the limits, but double cork 1080, maybe double cork 1440. Wow. Four full rotations, two flips, two spins. I know that's a possibility. I know uh, on the quarter pipe you can get 1260s, possibly a, what would that be, a 1620? Four and a half rotations, right? So it's, there's a lot of options allowed. Speed's airing out the quarter just to kind of get everyone Oh. So how is this going to go? Which order are they going in, and who should we be so watching? They will be going in. Um, it would be going right out the gate. Hold on, I should probably make sure I have that in front of me so I can keep up with it as well. I'm assuming Jake Melton goes first? Yeah, it would be Melton, then Cochran, then Spees, then Wisdom, Sanders, and then Reno, Brennan. So I will give uh, Hawk, I mean Melton the go-ahead to set up. Melton almost triple flipped right there. He went a little long, but we're going to see Jack Melton going first. Yeah, I'll say Melton set up, and then I'll call out the riders as I go. So Jake Melton going to get set up. He is going to get his first run attempt in. It looks like he's going for either a double or a triple flip. Let's see if he plays it safe. Right, I'll just give him the... Uh... Melton drop now, so he goes to go. All right, so here we go. Jake Melton, first run of the best trick competition. Let's see what he got. He goes up to the spine. 
He is going for the two, it looks like. Or is he trying to get the three around? No, I he goes two. He wanted the triple, but he just didn't get that pop that he was looking for. Interesting that when he didn't get the three pop, he didn't back out and go for the two. He could have landed it and played it safe on the first one. Yeah, all right. It looks like he just ended up crashing kind of in front of the ramp in Cochran's way a little bit. So I'm going to let him clear and then give Cochran the drop. There he all is. All right. So Cochran coming up next. Casey Cochran ready to drop off the top here for his first of three runs in the best trick competition. Call has been made. Let's see what Cochran does. Does he go for the three as well? Off the lip, he gets oh. one around. He might get the second, but he's going to be he's knuckling a little bit. Two. Doesn't oh. land it. Yeah. Nothing quite there for Cochran, so now we're going to be moving on to the speeds. So Jake Spees, let's see. He looks like he is going to set up on something different than... The spine is actually going for this jump into the step up. All right, so Spies' right. turn here. Let's see what he's got here for run one. Going into this jump, he's going to lay over a big whip. I think he it's the second jump whip. he's setting up yeah. for, though. He's going to go gonna for the go 720. I think he's trying to hit the bar on purpose. Got it clean. I don't know if we got it. I don't know if, we got, if we'll notice him hitting the bar, but I think that's what he was going for. That was... Uh, a little bit of style thrown out in that cork seven I saw. Yeah, cork seven pulled off. That's a 720 with a little bit of flair added to it for Jake Spies. First run, he is the first to land something, so obviously he will go into the uh, provisional lead at the moment. Jet Wisdom going to be setting up next. And we'll give you guys official scores after each uh, full set of runs is done. So right. Wisdom now going to be getting ready to go. Whenever he uh, gets up. Let's see where Wisdom is setting up to do something here. So we got a Cork 7 already laid down. Let's see what else these guys can put up against the competition here. So Wisdom dropping in here. Let's see what he's got. He's trying oh. to get a 720, I think, a little more flat spin off, but he only gets a 5 around and goes yeah. down. Then we're going to be moving on to August Sanders. I'll get him all set up to go. August looks like he is setting up for the quarter pipe this time. Intriguing starting location. Let's see what he can bring to the table. August is going to roll it down through the rocks here. He's got a little wheelie going into the quarter pipe. He's going to launch. He's going for a flat spin 540 oh, and falls doesn't down. Doesn't get it. Bring it in. That just leaves All Brennan right. for these first runs. Uh, yeah. Brennan, Brennan coming in to see what He's been hyping up to me before the event started. I'm very curious to see what he's bringing because I know Reno has some of the nuttiest tricks in Sim. All right, Brennan's going for the quarter pipe from the opposite angle that Sanders hit it. Let's see what Reno Brennan's got as he drops in off the top. He is going to go for a corked oh. seven, it looks like, but it doesn't work out, and he goes down. Oh, that is poof. That is a really impressive trick that Reno is trying to throw out there. It's almost as if he's trying to oppo flare and then bring the flare back. So it's almost like a reversed 540 in the flare. I it's I'm I don't know how to describe that. <laughs> Genuinely a very confusing Genuinely trick. Genuinely confusing. All right, so we'll wait for those first score runs to be tallied up. As Spies is very clearly the leader so far so we'll see what he scored and then i'm just making sure i got all this good and we'll show you guys numbers across the bottom of the screen in just a second all right so uh I got I should probably just post it three. So we would have Oh wait, it doesn't. Uh there are gonna be three runs total. So the first runs are now done. We're just waiting for those first round scores to be calculated and official scores to be given so we guys, we can let you guys know who's in in the lead or where the medals are at least so far. Obviously everybody crashed except for Jake Spies, so Spies is certainly going to be your leader. Mm 
And we'll see whether the judges are kind to at least some of the execution, even if the landing wasn't fulfilled on some of these. As well, Brennan almost ripped a 900 out real quick. I'll watch Reno Brennan here for just a second. Yeah, such an odd trick. It's like he's starting to do a regular flat spin 540, but then it kind of turns back over and he almost alley oops out of it. So there we have it, Melton with a uh, 22 and Cochran and uh, with a 20. Wisdom had a 15 and August with a 25. Reno with the 33, all of those are the unlands. I was somewhat generous to the uh, attempted tricks and the not lands. But yeah, speeds with an 82 to be the first kind of actual set score. All right, give me just one second. I will... All right, so now we should have scores being shown across the bottom of the screen for you guys. You'll see Jake Spies is our leader currently. As we get back into the server and check things out, Jake Spies ahead of Reno Brennan. And so that means we are set to do our second round of runs now, which means Jake Melton's going to drop in first. Melton gets his drop to go. His cue. <laughs> see, he's going for that triple back. Let's see if he can get it again. Oh, he's got oh, some good pop. good pop this time, but he Ooh. elects to back out of it, go for the double, and doesn't land oh. it. Land a little too low on the landing, it looked like. Unfortunate there. All right, next up going to be Cochran. Let's see if he's setting up for something here a little bit different than what he was trying to do the first time. I think he was maybe going for the three as well. All right. Like talking, get ready to drop whenever he wants here. I think he's setting up for something. Let's see what he's got here. He's going for the the shorter, looks like, jump here. Let's see what he's gonna do. Is he gonna try to do a cork seven as well? Of course, your early leader right now, Jake Spies. He did a cork seven on an 82 at the moment. Here comes Cochran into the short ramp. Let's see what he's got. It is gonna be um, an attempt at a cork seven, but it is not. Gonna get around, barely even got the first of the spin around. So really not going his way either. So back to your leader, Jake Spies. What is he gonna do for his second attempt here? Yeah, I'm I'm curious to see what Spies will can bring out. He's gonna come in and table over this to get a little bit better run. Let's see if it works out for him. He is gonna go for the three. He's got one around. Oh, he's only going two. And he knuckles it and goes down. Not quite what Spies wanted there. That's upsetting. I really want to see some people land some big tricks off of that spine because it has a lot of opportunities open to it. So now back to Jet Wisdom. Let's see what he's able to do. Try to get himself pulled up into the mix for a medal or perhaps land something that gets him into the gold medal position. It is still Spies in the lead. At the moment. So here we go. Wisdom dropping into this one. He is going to cork out a similar ish 720 and pulls it around nicely. He actually went over the bar that time. So the second one landed. Seemed like there was maybe a little bit of a cork in the second spin than we saw out of Spies. Obviously, a bit more height too because he slowly rolled into the ramp. So we'll see how the judges fare on those two cork sevens. Pretty much the identical trick on the same jump, too. So next up, August Sanders going for his second run. We now have two riders with actual lands of the jump. So here comes Sanders. He's going into the quarter pipe again. He's trying to get that flat spin 540. Let's see if he gets it. Very nice rotation, brings it around clean, and he's got it. August Sanders with essentially a McTwist 
or a flare. One or the other, but it's also similar to a flat spin 540 with the way he gets that bike turned around. So we got another landing done. And that'll bring us back to the top of the sheets. Reno Brennan for the last run in the second round of runs here for the FMX Best Trick Competition. Three riders have landed their jumps now, so who is going to come out on top after the second round of runs? All right, let's see what Reno Brennan has for us. Here comes Reno Brennan off the top, going into the quarter pipe. He's going to try this alley-oop weird line again. Oh, oh he just oh, doesn't no. get it around. It's He's so close. It is very close. It's a mixture of, I think, a McTwist, but opposite direction, turning it into an alley-oop so Brennan doesn't get it landed. But, oh, he was oh so close. So we'll keep in mind the... Uh, first round scores with Spies on an 82. Have to imagine, though, that Sanders and uh, Wisdom will be moving up the leaderboard just a little bit here. So let's see who is your leader after the second round of runs. As we await those judges' scores, and Jake Spies is throwing huge on the quarter pipe. He was the gold medalist uh, from last night. Looks like other guys are still trying to figure out what can they make happen. Cochran is trying to size something up maybe on this quarter pipe. Let's pull a standard flare out if he can. Melton's still trying to go for that triple back, I think. And this one's only going to be a double, but he's way up in the air. But this is uh, not for his run. He needs to have that happen when his run can count. To wisdom laying it down. So does Melton go big? Does he try to get the three in his next run, or is he just going to go simply for the double? Speed's way up in the air. Wow, almost actually landed that. All right, second round scores coming in. Wisdom with an 81. August Sanders goes to the top of the board with an 84. So, August Sanders, your new leader, with an 84 score. That will move uh, Spies back into second. Yeah, I am uh, highlighting their uh, best score runs that, when I update, so you're getting pretty much a running order as I post it as well. All right. Posting and every single Jet, crash is going to be a little unnecessary. <laughs> Jet Wisdom goes to third, and Reno Brennan now finds his way into fourth. All right, that means we can have with Melton set up again. Yeah, Jake Melton on a 22 now moving into fifth place. So Sanders, yep. your new leader here, quite impressive. And we'll see Jake Melton if he can do something to stop it here in his final run. August Sanders now in a position to win the gold medal, though, with his flat spin 540 on the quarter pipe. We got a couple of 720s with a cork pulled out. Here comes Melton for his third and final run, trying to get that triple backflip off. It's only going to be oh, a single no. backflip if he can get it around. He's trying to get it around, and he Too doesn't. Fast. Man, he ran it, landed a super clean double backflip at one point, but it just is not going to work out for him here tonight. Uh, unfortunate, to say the least. Unfortunate for Melton there. So Cochran... Getting ready for his last run coming up. Let's see what Cochran is sizing up. Is he going to go for the the big booter? Or is he using that specifically to get a run he up to the quarter that pipe? Running, yeah. So here we I go, Cochran, trying to get a run up. Let's see. He is going to use that yep. booter line to get a run up to the quarter pipe. Let's see what he's got, Cochran. He's going for the front oh. flip over the backside of the quarter pipe, but he's knuckling. Oh, oh he front flips out of it, but he oh. goes down. He almost double flipped. That, oh. that oh. would have been spectacular if he pulled that off. Incredible. So now Jake Spies, your early leader, sits in the silver medal position. He's got to come up with something big to beat Sanders. And he is also heading for the quarter pipe. Remember, he was the quarter pipe big air gold medalist from last night. 
And here we go, run in to try to steal the gold away from Sanders. Let's see what Spies has got. He's going big time, big opposite whip into a floater down the backside to land and he doesn't oh. get it. He was essentially oh. using the same line that he did to get the quarter pipe gold medal and it doesn't work. I mean, the big air probably could have helped him, but man. All right. All right, Just Jet Wisdom now. Ready to drop. Trying to dethrone Sanders. It's only going to be him or Brennan who could do it. Sanders is guaranteed a medal at this point. He will get bronze at worst. Jet Wisdom can pull something off here. Let's see what he is going to size up. He's going to roll to the outside here. I think he is also going quarter pipe. I think he is too. There's trying just two to, get to go. So. Pretty long run up into it as well. So here we go. Jet Wisdom trying to get... Up into the gold medal spot. He's going big on the quarter pipe. He's pulling oh, kind of a corked underflip, but he's going to land fakey. Oh, he landed nosy fake. But uh, right, that is not going to be it for him. So Brennan, can he pull off this gnarly corked out underflip? Well, we still have one more person before Brennan. Cause oh, Sanders, August right. He still has his last run to do. We'll give him his cue to go, and let's see if he can maybe raise that score or not. So let's see what Sanders has got. He is going to come into the short jump here to get a little bit more run into the quarter pipe than he had. Let's see what he's pulling off this time. He's going for another flat spin five, a little bit more corked out, and he oh, kind of rides out of it, but not going to be better. All right. Reno Brennan trying to dethrone Brennan. Sanders for gold. Here we go, final run in the best trick competition. Let's see if he can get it done and get that trick that he's been trying so hard. Oh, Let's see what he's going to do home. here. So it's going to turn into, looks like a regular 540, but he kind of underflips it back to the other side, and he's landed oh. it! A huge Reno trick for Reno Brennan. Brennan! He gets it done! Will that be enough to steal the gold away from Sanders? That trick is absolutely incredible. And as there's going to be no more runs, we're just going to go back and play this back now to watch it over again. Because that is awesome to see how that one played out. So Brennan will watch him do a couple of his runs here. <laughs> Everybody else hitting the jumps. Gotta go deep into the demo. Now he certainly was putting some practice in before that last attempt. And it pays off. So here we go. He was really starting to think about it coming into this one. And here it is. Reno Brennan's last jump. Floats it out. I don't even know what to call this. So let's try to break it down in slow-mo here. So he's going to take off the ramp. And it's pretty much looking like it's going to be a, a similar 540 or alley-oop or, or you know something like that. But then the front end starts to kick up. And it floats back the opposite direction. He's starting to lean it back the other way. And the way that that bike just comes around... Incredible, and I mean buttery smooth on the landing. It doesn't get much smoother than that. Watch it again in slow motion. Still don't even really know what this is. I don't know what you call it. The Reno roll. And they see that front end kick up and him start leaning it back the opposite direction to start bringing that back around. An incredible. Incredible for Brennan. Let's go back to Sanders's run that had put him in the gold medal position initially. And compare it to what Brennan was doing. Got to go back a little ways here. So here's Sanders's run that put him in the gold medal spot initially. It was very clean. It was pretty much your standard... 
flat spin ish 540 off of a quarter pipe. Got the pop very clean. Let's the front end kick high like you need it to because then it's going to turn back low when the rear end comes around like it is right here. You're going to see the front end kick back to the low side and he plants it right at the top. I mean, if anything, a little nose high, but that's just the way that that kind of turns out. Very, very good right there. I have your score that you can attribute to Reno. Okay, and Reno Brennan's score in that... Is a 94. A 94 for Reno Brennan. That will be plenty enough for Reno Brennan to take home the gold medal here in the MX Stimulator Best Trick Competition. One more time, we'll relook at the move that has given him the gold medal here tonight as August Sanders has been denied. Jake Spieth will take home the bronze with his flat uh, with his uh, cork 720. So good to see that we got three different tricks really off here. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm definitely amped to see that we got some variety in there. Reno Brennan, your gold medalist in the FMX best trick competition, and this is what we're looking at here: the Reno roll, as we have early dubbed it. Can't think of a better name for it because I still don't even know what he's doing. I cannot figure it out. I mean, I'm trying to break it down in slow motion. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's, it starts off as like it's as if he's doing a flare with a whip in the first half of it. It's confusing. It's like a a 540, but with an alley oop at the end of it to bring the bike back around the other direction. Yeah, it's just wrong, but it's great. I mind boggling is what it is. All right, so the final look here for your gold medal winning run at Reno Brennan. Wild Side Designs number zero. And does it on the very last run in the best trick competition. And a worthy winner of the gold medal here tonight for Brennan on the quarter pipe. The Reno roll gets it done tonight in MX Simulator. Wow. That will be... The ending of the second night of competition for the MXS games. Indeed it will. Indeed it will. As my game has now crashed. So perfect ending. Perfect right timing. <laughs> Just per <laughs> perfect timing. Well, well, thank you, first of all, uh, Mr. Dominic Saulnier, for putting this event on. Night two now in the books. And it was a lot of fun. Got three thank new gold medalists crowned. Thank you for having me in the booth. It was, uh, it was fun to be here and participate in watching the carnage that took place in all three events. Yeah, it was absolutely a lot of fun to see how it all played out tonight. And uh, three new gold medalists crowned on the night. So please be sure to join us tomorrow night. Uh, more action coming in the MX Simulator games. You guys will want to tune in as we have Supercross, the Speed and Style Finals, and the FMX Finals as well. So all the chaos that we saw, guys going for that one singular trick tonight now we got people trying to put it together in runs tomorrow night and the speed and style finals as well going to be a lot of fun to watch after supercross so we hope to join you guys then i'm going to duck out of here uh dom but thanks again for hosting and yep. uh, we'll see you tomorrow night yep, see you tomorrow night man all right so that is it here tonight at the mx simulator games night two is done and hopefully you guys had a lot of fun watching it and uh we just completed the supermoto event followed up by the pit bike racing and then wrapped it up with best trick and three new gold medalists have been crowned. Big shout out to rjerky and atom.com as always for being a part of the broadcast uh, here on Start Your Systems this year. And uh, as you also heard there from Dominic Saulnier who is putting on this event with Palm189's help and uh, MX Way Gamer also helping. So thanks again guys so much for all the support. Hopefully you guys enjoyed tonight's action. And we'll see you guys tomorrow night for the third night of MX Simulator games here uh, on Star Your Systems. All right, guys. Bye-bye for now.